Nina can come on when she's good to go. So yeah, welcome sure. everyone. Ha good morning. I think for those Star Trek fans, it's May the 4th be with you. So I've been dying to say that all morning and I was like, I'm totally <laughs> Welcome to today's foreign worker recruitment webinar and we will get started. I'm just gonna move this. Uh, so just a little bit about MMBA. We proudly represent the franchise new car truck dealers across Manitoba. Our members employ over 6,500 people and generate 2.6 billion annually to Manitoba's economy. MMDA operates throughout Manitoba. Our primary office is located at Treaty 1 territory in the homeland of the Métis Nation. Our work extends throughout treaties 2, 3, 4, and 5. We acknowledge that Winnipeg water is sourced from the Shoal Lake 40 First Nation. We respect the treaties made on these territories. We dedicate ourselves to move forward with Indigenous communities in the spirit of reconciliation and collab collaboration to Manitoba, an inclusive and safe place for everyone who lives here. So just a few little housekeeping items. All our participants are currently muted. If you do have a question at the bottom, there's a chat and Q&A function. I'll administer those throughout the webinar um, and we are recording. So if you do need a copy of this, a uh, copy can be sent out to you. Okay, so who is doing our webinar today? Our first speaker is Cheyenne. He is the Talent and Workforce Development Manager. Cheyenne works as the primary contact for Yes Winnipeg Talent Team. He is responsible for implementing the strategies necessary to attract, retain, and develop talent. He works closely with de business development, foreign direct investment, investor relations, and our partners to ensure the business has access to deep talent goals. Cheyenne is a seasoned business development executive who brings more than 10 years of experience in the networking and building relationships with clients in diverse industries across various regions. He recently graduated from the MBA program at the Asper School of Business at the University of Manitoba. Congratulations. Our next speaker is Yelena. She is also a talent and workforce development officer. Yelena is a business development officer with Economic Development Winnipeg, who helps bring businesses to grow through the access of their talent pools. As part of the talent team, she is currently planning, coordinating, and executing international recruitment missions, the Talent Hub, and other initiatives of Yes Winnipeg Talent Team. Yelena has more than 10 years of experience, international experience, in recruiting talent for diverse industries. She is a passionate Winnipegger committed to providing businesses with connections to partner programs and information that fuels their growth and development in our city. Our final speaker today, Sophia. Sophia is a partner with the law firm of Fillmore and Riley here in Winnipeg. She started the immigration department at Fillmore 19 years ago and practices business immigration law and cross-border criminal inadmissibility with a focus on the professional sports industry in Canada, including legal representation of DFL, CPL, and other professional sport leagues. She is elected chair of the Manitoba Bar Association Immigration Law Section and a Canada Bar Association National Immigration Law Executive, sharing it continued chairing its continued legal education subcommittee. Sophia is also a past president of the Manitoba Bar Association. She has been invited to present on a variety of immigration issues, including employer compliance, criminal inadmissibility, work permits, study permits, and labor market assessments at national, international, and local conferences, as well as a guest lecture at the law schools and college, colleges across Canada. She holds a Bachelor of Science degree and a Bachelor of Arts degree in addition to her Bachelor of Law degree. She has been named the best lawyer list in Canada for immigration for the past decade, which named her Lawyer of the Year for the 2022 in Immigration Law. When you can't find her at the office, you can find her doing dojo, I hope I said that right, when she trains at the fourth degree black belt in karate representing Manitoba at Nationals to defend her senior women's title and a member of the Team Canada at the Pan American Games, where she brought home silver and bronze for Canada in 2018. Well, that's amazing. You might have to elaborate on that when you take over. 
Okay, Cheyenne, now it is your go. So I'm just going to let you take over and you can start pr providing everyone with the services that you provide. Absolutely. And that was a great intro, by the way. Thank you. So, yeah. Remind me never to mess with you. <laughs> Hi, so are you able to see my screen? Yeah. Right. So I'd like to first of all uh, thank Aaron and uh, the team at MMBA for inviting me today. Uh, I'd also like to thank the members for giving their time. Uh, as uh, Erin mentioned, my name is uh, Shyam Narayan Murthy, and I'm the Talent and Workforce Development Manager. Uh, so to, today we'll talk to you about uh, our Economic Development Winnipeg uh, on our international recruitment missions for 2022. Uh, this will take approximately 10 to 15 minutes, and I'm happy to take any questions after the presentation. So we know uh, businesses like yours are good at selling your companies and job opportunities, but you may need help in selling Winnipeg to quality candidates internationally or navigating immigration or retaining talent. In response, our organization has built concierge services designed to help you attract, hire, and retain international talent. Today, I'll share with you how you can connect with talent from Hong Kong and Ukraine. So we have a market intelligence team uh, and our research shows that Hong Kong has a highly educated workforce proficient in English. Most of the workforce are employed in business related services ranging from finance, real estate to transportation and IT. We also did our research uh, on Ukraine before the crisis had unfolded. Ukraine has a highly educated, literate population with a large pool of talent working in technology and engineering. The country has a diversified economy like Manitoba. The combined skills and experience of Ukrainians make it ideal for them to find qualified work in key sectors in Manitoba. So with the help of our foreign direct investment team, we work with our international partners, like the consulates, which are called, which fall under Global Affairs Consulate, uh, IRCC, the Immigration Agency, and our Chambers of Commerce for our outreach. We typically create custom pages for our international recruitment missions so that motivated international job seekers can also visit them. In the case of Ukraine, we know that many of the people who are we are trying to reach may not be in Ukraine. We also know that these candidates are under enormous stress. So what we've done is create custom web pages in English and in Ukrainian as to how they can find jobs in Manitoba. So these partnerships with our consulates and our international partners are crucial because they legitimize our work in foreign markets. Uh, today, many international candidates are you know, prone to seeing uh, a lot of job scams or frauds. So this kind of work really helps us to work through official channels. So through the Yes Winnipeg Job Connections Portal, which is a single window solution for Manitoba businesses, we can see if our marketing campaigns are working in international destinations. As an example, this is a dashboard that shows the quality of job seekers from Ukraine who are creating profiles and this validated our research. It shows the education credentials and their diversity. It also shows us the job type, the job level and the function that candidates are seeking. The dashboard tells us that most candidates from Ukraine are right now looking for permanent employment mid-level positions, and in functions such as engineering, IT, and business operations. What's good to note is also you can see that there are quite a few who are looking for sales, retail, and customer service roles. 
So the Yes Winnipeg Job Connections Portal has been designed for Manitoba businesses to match international candidates with jobs. It is easy to use and free for all businesses and job seekers. We have created how-to guides to help you get the best possible match, including matching by location, skills, and diversity. So you can choose a candidate based on whether they are in Ukraine or in Hong Kong. The job portal also complies with Canadian and international privacy laws. So the portal provides us dashboards, which gives us meaningful insights, and then we can help you to improve your candidate matching and outreach. The screenshot of this dashboard tells us the candidates matched with jobs posted on our portal. 25,755 candidates were matched to the opportunities and were invited to apply. It also shows us that 864 invited candidates applied for the jobs. As you can see, the peak for invitations received in March aligns with the promotion of our Hong Kong mission. The total applications in April has surpassed total applications in March with the Hong Kong mission in full swing and our Ukraine initiative launched. We can share tips and tricks with you to improve your outreach if you're not getting enough applications. So to help you navigate immigration, we will provide referrals to immigration officers who will give you one-on-one -on -one advice. So obviously this is better than you reaching out through an direct, uh, a general email or a 1-800 number. In the case of Hong Kong, the federal government has announced an existing open work permit pathway last year. What this does, what this means is recent graduates can get an open work permit with an average processing time of just 12 weeks. For Ukraine, the federal government has created an immigration pathway for Ukrainian nationals and their family members who can be of any nationality. The new immigration pathway allows them to apply for new, for open work permits as well. There have been options for permanent residency and study or work permit extensions, which have also been announced. So settlement for international candidates and their family members is crucial. Uh, it helps them in retaining in the province. We work with ethno-cultural groups to host cultural awareness webinars for local businesses in Manitoba. So for instance, in Hong Kong, we're working with the Winnipeg Chinese Cultural and Community Center. With Ukraine, we're working with the Ukrainian Canadian Congress, uh, the Manitoba chapter. We will also help them to introduce the community to newcomers. In order for you to help to uh, help get the newcomers integrated to our community and increase the retention, uh, we have created settlement guides which can help newcomers to find schools, banks, get health cards, and more. The settlement guide is free, and we welcome all businesses to customize it to suit your specific business needs. The guide is only in English currently. We also have fantastic videos and information about Winnipeg available to you at liveinwinnipeg.com. And I can share with Erin and the team uh, the, 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 the links to these important resources. So the question is, how do you participate in our missions? It's quite easy. Uh, you go to our website, winnipegtalenthub.com. We'll send you the link. Step one, post your job opportunities on our portal after you register. Two, you can select the matched candidates to interview them and carry out your interviewing process. And three, you can get advice from an immigration officer if needed. As you know, there may be candidates with specific situations. We're more than happy to help you to guide you to an immigration officer at the federal or provincial level. So what is the mission's cost? We cover all the costs of promoting the missions, uh, Winnipeg as a city, the job platform, hosting webinars and events. 
employees will have to pay for any uh, immigration fees or recruitment expenses of their own. And what I mean by that is if you're using your own recruiting agency or working with immigration lawyers and advisors. So thank you for your time today. What I'll do is pass it on to my colleague, Elena. She'll quickly show you the job connections portal and share with you how uh, you can post a job and what are the few, con uh, few, uh, uh, few conditions or information resources that you can use to increase your outreach. Okay, um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, and thank you, Sham, for uh, sharing your presentation. Um, as Sham said, my name is Yelena. I'm Talent and Workforce Development Officer with Economic Development Winnipeg. I'm going to share my screen and uh, we'll be going through some pages. If that's too quick, please let me know. Um, and if you have any questions, there is a Q&A box right at the bottom of the screen. Please type your questions in that box. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen here. So hopefully you can see um, the uh, Yes Winnipeg Talent page here. So uh, in order to access the Job Connections portal, uh, you need to go to the winnipegtalenthub.com and then to the business, resource, business owner section. So then you select connect with the job seekers, but of course you will receive the direct link to that um, just for you to, to know where to find it on your own. So once you click on um, connect with the job seekers, you will have this page with a brief description of what type of the talent pool is out there. So as you can see, you can hire domestic, student talent, recent graduate, and international talent um, by using this uh, job connections portal. To access the job connections portal, you need to click on the uh, Yes Winnipeg job connections portal logo here, which I'm going to do right now. So once clicked, you will be asked to um, enter your login credentials, or if you are not registered yet, to create your account. So um, if you ever registered in the Magnet community, any other uh, community that is powered by Magnet, um, the system will tell you that you already have an account. So with your uh, email, you can have only one account. And actually, this is the beauty. Um, in order to become a member of different communities, all you need to do is to register once and then using the same um, email and um, password, the same credentials, log in uh, with different communities. So I'm just going to log in as employer here. Uh, before I do so, I just want to let you know all the information in this account is not true. And it was created for the demonstration purposes only. So this is not the real employer but we're going to do the real stuff. Like we're going to, um, to see how the uh, job posting process looks like. So while you are being you, uh, you need to click create an account here, and then it will ask you for, um, an, op for an option to select. So um, either you're an employer or a job seeker or recruitment agency, I would assume you would go by the employer and then um, fill in short information about your organization. So this information is enough to set your account. You will receive email uh, to your email um, address indicated here. Uh, keep in mind that email indicated here will be used as the primary mail and uh, all the communication will be sent to this email. So person who has an access to this mail uh, considered to be administrator of the employer account. So I'm just going um, back because I already uh, come through the registration process and going to log in. So this is the landing page for the employers and the first thing system offers you to do is to post a job. But before doing so, uh, there is a couple um, um, kind of settings uh, I would like to uh, emphasize. So uh, to access them, you need to click on your profile icon. So, and we highly recommend you to fill in all the information on your organization. You have your logo here, website and address. So you can all the time correct this information or change. So usually a website would lead to your career page where people can read uh, why they need to join your organization. And um, keep in mind that some of the job seekers, they are international. That's why we would encourage you to, to put as many as much information as possible here. 
so that they know that this is um, a real employer that exists and um, hires people. And the link should be, as I said, to your career page. So another important thing, if, if you open uh, again your account and then go to my settings. So um, as I said, the email address of the person who is registering the account is considered to be the primary holder and administrator of this account. So you can change this email at any time. For example, if the person moves to a new position, no need to um, forget about this account and create new. So all you can do is to change email address here, um, confirm the new one, and then um, join, um, and then save. Another thing is one, one, um, account can be accessed by different people. So you can add unlimited number of people here and you can assign them certain rights. Like, you know, they can, for example, post to jobs or they cannot do anything, just come and see. So um, you can, as an administrator can delete um, these people, but um, no one can delete the administrator. So this is the ultimate power uh, you are gaining. Uh, so um, again, make sure to add all the people who might be working on recruitment here. Uh, no need to create multiple accounts for one employer so that different people can post jobs. I'm going to go into the home screen now, and I will just start with posting a job. So um, when you click post a job, you will have three options. Um, to, to hire from different groups. You can do students and recent graduates, professional and skilled workers, and anyone, which means uh, you're okay with no educational or professional background. So anyone uh, category is not recommended to use, um, to be used, I mean, personally by me. Uh, the reason is because when you have no requirements, system doesn't uh, do the matching. So it, it doesn't send the invitation to apply for, um, for, the, for this role to the individuals that match your requirements because there is no requirements. It just um, posts the job on the job board, but you obviously want to have as many candidates as possible know about your job opportunity. So and the best way is to select the category right in the middle, which is called professional and skilled workers. So I'm clicking on that. And we're brought to the job creating um, <clears throat> page. So I'll be doing that really quickly and uh, we'll stop at some very important um, aspects here. So if you're uh, an employer who used the applicants tracking system, so this is the system where, where you store your resumes um, and sometimes your website connected to the system. So that's uh, when the job seeker use the website, it directly sends the resume to your system. <clears throat> So you can use your system um, if you have any, and then uh, paste the link to this specific job opportunity here. So whenever a candidate will click apply, they will be redirected to your um, applicant tracking system. Uh, I don't have any, so I'm going to use Magnet and I will receive resumes and cover letters, should I ask for them, in the system itself. I can also select an option to receive um, applications via email as well. So I'm going to create neutral position for administrative assistant, but um, just um, keep in mind yours will be a bit different based on the uh, sphere and job category. So I need resume and cover letter for my job. Sometimes uh, employers just need resume. So I'm going to select administrative assistant and it's entry level. Again, uh, select the level based on the um, job description you have. With regards to the job category, sometimes, um, for example, if you're looking for something specific, um, I recently had like a woodworking um, position. So you would uh, select, for example, um, you would type the, the, the first word and it will try to, to show you something that might be relevant for, um, for, for your category. So there are different categories. So um, if you cannot find it manually. So I'm going to use administration, business, and operations. So as for my job description, this is usually copy paste. So you already uh, have something created, just copy and paste it here. I'm going to put test because if I don't put anything here, this system will not allow me to move further on. Uh, about location. So this is the location of the job, not, not the job seeker. And you need to type where your job is located. Mine is located in Winnipeg, and if yours is outside, uh, make sure you select the right location for your uh, job posting. So job type, 
Um, it depends on what type of the job your job opportunity is. It might be apprenticeship or um, I don't know, like um, it might be seasonal as well. Mine will be permanent and full time. And with regards to the compensation, again, it can be hourly, it can be salary, um, depends on, on the terms and conditions. So for the work uh, term, mine is open-ended, it's not a term position, but if your position is a term one, select the end date for this as well. As for the start, um, I need a person SAP and remote work. So this is something, um, a new field you need to fill in. So um, you can select that this is remote only, um, remote during pandemic, on-site, no remote or hybrid. So select what um, is best describes your job opportunity. So we work full-time from the office and that's why I'm hiring um, without a remote option. So with regards to the language, always select English and indicate as required uh, because the system can be in French language too. So you might um, encounter some people who don't speak English or if the person um, is not indicating that they uh, know language, they will not be matched to this role. So for example, if you're looking for a bilingual candidate, you need to select second language and then both of them indicate as required. The system will um, do the search and will understand that if a person has both of these languages, then it's, um, it's a match for this role. But if the person does not have two languages, then the match is not happening and the person is not receiving invitation to apply. But in, in cases when you say knowledge of French is an asset, you need to select preferred here. So when selecting preferred, system will prioritize bilingual candidates, but will still do the match even if the candidate doesn't know French. So that's the difference when you select required or preferred. So uh, be careful here not to indicate, like for example, four languages and all of them preferred. It's it, it's it, it almost impossible for a person to, for a system to find this type of person. So I'm just going to leave English and leave it as required. With regards to the work eligibility, here is the most interesting part. So you can target different locations and different countries by selecting them from this list. For example, I would say uh, I need to hire um, domestic candidates, but if I'm not successful in that, I'm going to look for international candidates. And I would like to be part of Hong Kong, for example, recruitment mission with Yes Winnipeg. And um, then I know about Ukrainian initiative, I would put Ukraine here as well. So when you do multiple selections, don't put them as required. All of them should be preferred. So the system will do the search and will give the preferences to, to the candidates who has one of them or all of them, which is very unlikely, but um, it will do the search among all of those three categories. If you indicate required, um, which means that the candidate, for example, if you indicate Canada as required, which means the candidate should have both um, Canada and Hong, preferably Hong Kong, but it will not be targeting um, people from Canada or Hong Kong because of this component um, between like the system understand the, the algorithm in a different way. So. Again, if you select multiple locations, mark them all as required. But for example, by some reason you would say, oh, I would like to hire uh, people from Ukraine only. So that's how you can, um, selecting this country as required, that's how you can target only one uh, job market with your job posting. I'm going to put as preferred and we'll select Canada here as well and select it as a preferred. So as for the number of positions, I would put one and application deadline. We strongly recommend to, to move as far as the system allows you to. So I'll do August 2nd, because again, if you hire internationally, just allow some time for, for candidates to, to find the job and uh, apply for that. And sometimes it's a lengthy process too. So we click continue here. Before I move further on, we know uh, from the back end uh, of our system that only 46% of people filled in their work experience. So it doesn't mean that the rest do not have it. It means that system allows you to have your profile with having only one criteria. So very important for us to, to, keep, to keep this information in mind when creating the job. 
And I'm just going to, to show you how your choice affects the number of candidates that will be targeted by this job posting. So I'm selecting the one right in the middle, which says work experience, and it offers me position in the organization or skill trade. So mine is not skill trade. I will be selecting position in the organization. And for example, I will select uh, clerical and administrative. So my selection here will uh, generate the list of the job, job duties below because I have selected only one. I have only two options to select from here. If I add, for example, other departments, it broadens your search. For example, if your position is really generic like mine, you can have a person with different backgrounds. So feel free to add multiple um, like industries that fill um, that sorry that match with the uh, job that um, that is supposed to be done. So, for example, um, I'm okay with the person to have sales and other um, you know experience. So I can fill actually um, a lot of uh, different. Uh, industries here and then I'm selecting um, job duties here again it's it, it this job duty field can have multiple um, multiple selections here so this is job duties and below are the skills and these are hard skills so uh, knowledge of different um, programs and uh, software so I'm going to to go with Microsoft Office but for your role, feel free to select whatever is relevant. Again, here we have preferred and required criteria. So if this is something you can not consider candidate without, then make, make it required. If it's an optional, then select the preferred. Again, you can have multiple locations here and it pretty much acts like you would have in your job posting. Some, um, job, uh, some skills are required and some considered an asset. So if your skill set considered an asset, uh, indicate it as preferred in your job posting. So I click continue and uh, it's actually enough for a system to be ready to post a job. So you need just to um, review your job posting because once it's posted, you cannot do major change, changes to your job and the, uh, to your job posting. And the reason is because once it's um, sent invitation to apply to the candidate, you cannot change the content because it might change the target audience that that is a match for your job um, opportunity. So if you, you did like a critical mistake, I don't know what type of that, but you suspend the job and then post a new one. So um, again, the reason is you cannot correct um, any um, information you have already created. So you see here, um, everything in blue means you filled it in. And I'm going to select different job boards. So uh, for to have different job boards, you need to select Yes Winnipeg International. Um, you should have Yes Winnipeg and always expand that to the broader magnet network. So this is the set of job boards uh, you need to select when you target international candidates. If you want to hire domestic candidates only, deselect Yes Winnipeg International because Yes Winnipeg International is a separate job board for international candidates. And that's how, for example, if you are looking to hire Ukrainian talent, this is the one you, you must select. But again, this is specifically for international candidates who are not in Canada yet, but are willing to relocate. And this is the job board we use for our international missions. So just one more time. Three job boards, Yes Winnipeg, Yes Winnipeg International, and Magnet Network. This is when you hire internationally, and only two, Yes Winnipeg and Magnet, when you hire um, domestically. So let's see um, the numbers we have here. So we have 4.7 thousand candidates, because again, my job was not too specific, um, not so much of a requirement. So I'm just going to add education here for us to see how it will affect the number of candidates. So these are the candidates who were identified by the system that they match to my job requirements. So you can immediately know that for your job posting, there are this many candidates who are a potential match to do this job. So, and for example, I'm going to add education here. And I would say I, I'm okay with certificate, diploma, undergraduate, master. So maybe master will be overqualified, but I'm okay with that. So graduate, and then 
uh, required. So I require this person to be a graduate. So for example, if you have a job opportunity for a general labor position, you do not need the, the education. You just select high school diploma, graduate and put required. That's it, that what you will do for general labor position. This is so quick and you put continue. But mine is um, needs some education. So that's why, again, I will do multiple selection here and put graduate and required. So you can even go granular and select what um, you know, institutions they graduated from. I actually don't care for this specific role. And are you looking uh, for a candidate based on their subject areas? Because for example, for some job opportunities, you need them to, to, to study certain, um, certain um, you know, subjects at um, their school. So feel free to go this granular if you need to. So I'm clicking continue here. And now the system, oh, okay. Should not be. Oh, okay. So yeah, it asks you for um for for the program. So you can select, for example, a uh, business and management and go all programs, like or you can select specific ones, or for example, arts, um, and it also says all programs. You can as again, you can go granular or select sciences, for example, all or granular one by one, whatever is re relevant for your specific job posting. So I'll click continue now. And this is very important moment when it asks you, do you want a candidate to have education requirement or experience requirement? Leave it as it is, because if you put and it will try to find the candidate with both. But as I said in the beginning, we have only 46% who filled it, uh, um, educate, sorry, who filled their professional experience. The rest didn't fill this information in. And again, it doesn't mean they don't have it. So I click, oh my God, cancel. What did I click? Okay, give me a sec. So we have education, we have experience. Okay, yeah, now my numbers are working. So uh, again, you can check whether you, um, you have your education filled in. Uh, it, this area will turn blue. So, and now you can see if without education, my numbers were 4,700. 4, 4, now it's 12,700. Of course, it is because my job posting is so generic, but again, um, the, the network is growing every day, lots of people joining this app. Um, feel, feel free to play around different criteria. And if you feel, for example, that you have only 20 candidates, it means that you did something wrong with those requirements or you put so strict requirements for the candidate to have so you don't leave room for uh, for a system to do the matching to, to, to other candidates. So um, I think that's it for me, then you would activate your job posting and it will go active. I'm not going to do so because um, I'm not the real employer. And uh, once you activate, the system will take about 30 uh, minutes to one hour because your job posting will be verified that you are a real employer and this job posting is actually um, the valid one. Okay, so thank you very much, Yelena. I am just yep. going to uh, get back mm -hmm. in and start sharing Sophia's. Okay, can you see this, Sophia? I can, thank you, Erin. Okay. So welcome everyone and thanks again um, for the invitation to speak today and my contact information will be at the end of my presentation so if you run out of time for questions then feel free to send me an email or send an email to Erin and, and we'll get those, um, those questions answered for you. So uh, uh, next slide, Erin, um, I'm just going to, so in my presentation what I'm going to go over is identifying um, some factors to consider for identifying which clients or which um, employees, sorry, in your um, at your office are actually foreign nationals, permanent residents, citizens, and does it, you can be confident on what you need to do foreign national wise. Erin, um, you might have to just, um, yeah, that, that's fine. We'll also go through um, individuals that are on work permits, study permits, factors that you need to consider, um, and we'll go a little bit through labor market impact assessments, which is a bit of a different process than we described in the uh, 
the other two presentations. So we can move to the next slide. Thanks, Aaron. Okay, so how you can identify that if there's an employee at your office that is a foreign national, a lot of our clients are actually not aware of which employees are actually foreign nationals and that there's other factors that they have to consider in order to um, maintain their legal status in Canada, which is the most important factor for an employee employer to consider. So what uh, you should be looking for in your employee database is numbers that social insurance numbers that start with the number nine. That's an indication that the person is a temporary resident in Canada and requires certain paperwork and immigration status documents in order to be present in Canada. So I, I wanted to mention that and we can move to the next slide. Um, Aaron? Okay, sorry, I just- Sorry, the one just before that one oh, is good. Okay, this one? Yeah. Yes, absolutely, that's great. So social insurance numbers that start with the number nine. Um, Canadian citizens and permanent residents have a social insurance number that typically start with a six, so you're looking for the nine, um, and that'll identify all the foreign nationals that are that are working at the company. So uh, the other thing that you want to consider for those particular foreign nationals is that you also have on the HR file the document that allows them to actually work at your company. So if it's a work permit, it could even be a study permit because study permits permit um, an individual to work for a certain number of hours depending on whether or not they're studying full-time or part-time. We're going to get to that later on in the presentation, but um, that's paperwork that you actually want on the HR file. So a lot of the times when I'm retained by uh, my clients in a situation where there's an issue of whether or not the, the, uh, the person is able to continue working for the company, uh, the first thing that I ask for is a copy of the work permit or the study permit, which is the governing document and is the document that allows them to have legal status in Canada. And often the employers don't have that information. And it is actually mandatory to have that information on file as it's the only way that an employer can actually confirm that they're hiring an employee that they're allowed to hire. So um, that's the probably the, one of the biggest tips for today. The onus is on the employee though, to ensure that they maintain their legal status, but the onus is on the employer to make sure that they're not hiring an employee or maintaining an employee that doesn't have legal status in Canada. So next slide, Erin. So we, um, we, can, we can skip through this citizen slide, um, uh, but there are three different categories. So I just wanted to identify what they were. So citizens of Canada um, is straightforward. So we can jump to the next slide, Erin, for permanent residents. Okay, so permanent residents are those that have, um, that have gone through the immigration process and are now landed immigrants of Canada. And the term that was switched from the previous law is now permanent resident of Canada. So they're allowed to do pretty much everything that a Canadian citizen can do except they can't vote in elections. And if there's an issue with respect to a criminality uh, matter, if they get a, a, a DUI or something like that, then there's the risk that they, their permanent resident status could be removed depending on what the outcome of that litigation is. So, um, so they're a little bit of a different category there. The ones that we, uh, and next slide, Erin, the ones that we want to be most, uh, paying the most attention on is foreign nationals. Um, they're temporary residents in Canada. And those are, that's the category that I've been speaking about with respect to the individual being on a study permit or a work permit and making sure that that paperwork is on the HR file at the company. Okay, next slide. So uh, we talked about the first factor already and making sure that the employee maintains their legal status in Canada. You can see that from the, uh, the end date that's actually noted on the work permit or the study permit. And the title of the document will actually be noted on the doc on the immigration document. So it'll actually say work permit or study permit right on the document. Um, a work permit is not the same thing as a work visa. A work visa is something that's glued into a person's passport. It is not an interchangeable term. One is allows a person to enter Canada and the other one allows a person to actually maintain their legal status in Canada. So two very different things. So what I'm gonna be talking about specifically are work permits, not work visas. Um, but we, we can get into that in, in questioning and, and all of that as well. So one of the other things that you wanna make sure of is that if a work permit is expiring while the employee is, is, um, is at the office, you wanna make sure that their extensions are filed on time because if the extension is filed after their work permit expires, they have to be removed um, from payroll at work immediately. If the work permit application is filed or the extension is filed before the um, expiry of the permit, 
then you wanna make sure um, that you have that evidence on file. So when a person files a work permit application, they actually receive a document from, from immigration that is called an acknowledgement of receipt. And that acknowledgement of receipt you want actually on your HR file because it confirms what type of application was filed by the coding. And it also confirms the date that the application was filed and that it's relevant to your employee. So something to keep in mind. Now, some em employees think that they're eligible for a work permit extension, but there are many, many circumstances where a person is not eligible. So those are some of the factors where you may need to get um, some, some advice from a, a professional that understands what options are available. Um, so that's the kind of advice that our office provides um, all the time. So there is conditions noted on work permits. You wanna make sure that all of those factors are considered as well. And there are also limitations for students that are working at your office where they will only be allowed to work a certain number of hours a week. Typically it's 20 hours a week. There are different types of, of uh, student permits, but that's the most common one. But the student can only work 20 hours a week if they are in school full time. If they are not in school full time, that option is removed as noted in the immigration legislation. The other factors to consider with, with students, so when every time you, so when you're requesting that uh, that status document that shows that they have legal status in Canada and you see a study permit, the first question you need to ask is if they're in, in school full time. Because if they're not in school full time, then they are not allowed to be working for those 20 hours a week um, outside of the campus. The other factor there are extensions and um, there's an entitlement to other types of work permits after they're finished school. And during the off uh, season from school, so during the summer, if they're not studying during the summer or the Christmas season or spring break, they're allowed to work full-time hours. But there's a bunch of exceptions and considerations for that, but just something to be mindful of. Uh, next slide, Erin. Um, just a couple more slides to go and, and I'll be done the presentation. So for uh, supporting documents, Sometimes there's a situation where the employee applies for immigration and they're gonna ask um, the HR department at your office for a confirmation of employment but they, or a letter that confirms that they're employed with your company, but they might not indicate why they're asking for it. So it, sometimes that's happening because they're actually applying for immigration through one of the provincial programs, the Manitoba Provincial Nominee Program. And if that's the case, they need a letter from the employer confirming that their position is permanent, or that it's a long-term position. So they might even ask for a certain job classification code. It's called a NOC code, National Occup Occupation Classification. And immigration works with different skill levels in those NOCs. So there's five different skill levels. And if you're in certain skill levels, you can apply for immigration. In other skill levels, you can't. So, and there's the options that are available for immigration are affected by that. So. Sometimes uh, we have employers that are asked all the time by an employee, can you make my job noted under such and such knock when it really is, is, isn't under that knock? So that's something to be um, careful of because you don't wanna be put in a situation where you, you have an employee in one job classification, but you've identified on the document that they might be submitting to the province um, that has a different um, classification. So just a factor that I wanted to point out. Um, as far as, in, so, that, so we've talked about point one and point two, as far as the, the RAP application, that's the Worker Recruitment and Protection Act. It's a, it's a short application, it takes about 10 minutes to complete, but the Manitoba Provincial Nominee Program requests it of employers that are attached to an employee's immigration application, because the employer is the reason, and the fact that they have this long-term job with a Manitoba employer is what makes them eligible to apply for immigration. And so, I just wanted to uh, point that out so that you're, you're aware of that if that occurs. We talked about knocks and promotions um, a little bit, but if a person's promoted and they change skin levels from one to another, that could affect their immigration application. Those kinds of things need to be identified. Um, and there's also, you also wanna make sure that if a person is going to be promoted, that the work permit allows for that promotion because some work permits are closed to a specific job and a specific um, category of work and others are open. And the circumstances surrounding open work permits can be under a variety of different categories. You wanna make sure that the work permit is actually, you're following the um, requirements on that specific work permit. Um, 
and then changing employers. So sometimes an employee will, as was working somewhere else, they applied for immigration. Now they're working for your entity. Their work permit's about to expire. And the immigration paperwork for the work permit extension has some another employer's name on it, which could be a problem for getting the work permit extension if that isn't corrected. So I just wanted to point out that those kinds of factors arise as well. Uh, next slide, Erin. Labor market impact assessment. So typically when a, a person um, or when a company has a labor shortage, the employee, um, it has to be shown that you try to hire a Canadian or a Canadian permanent resident. If there is no ability to do so, then, and nobody wants to take on that job or a Canadian permanent resident doesn't want to take on that job, then you have to prove that labor shortage by filling out an application, doing some advertising, doing some recruitment, all of that stuff to see, uh, and, and then see if you get Canadians that are applying to the position. There's a bunch of compliance requirements that go with that. The advertising has to be in specific mediums. It has to include 11 compliance criteria. Um, and if you're missing some of that, the whole um, labor market impact assessment application so that you can actually request permission from the government of Canada to hire that employee abroad, it will fall apart because it sits on the advertising to ensure that Canadians had full opportunity to apply for the position first. Now there are exemptions from that labor market impact assessment process. So that's the starting point. And then we work our way down to exceptions and there are exceptions. So applying for immigration can make uh, an employee LMIA exempt. Um, there's a whole bunch of different scenarios when a labor market impact assessment is not required, but there are other circumstances where it is. So I wanted to point out that it's another um, another factor to consider. These are lengthy applications, so you wanna get started on those ASAP. And as I had noted in a previous slide, um, we wanna make, you wanna make sure that you're documenting not just the expiry date of, of an employee's work permit or study permit, but you wanna note that three months or more in advance because the steps that are required in order to move that to the next step take time. So you want to have that opportunity just in case you need it. In some cases, we can get things done quickly, but in other cases, we can't. So having at least three or four months of, a, of lead time makes more options available to ensure that you can maintain that employee and retain that employee if it's one that you want to retain. So I'll leave it at that for now. Next slide, Erin. I think that was, um, yeah, so, that, so that's all. So I, I'm available for questions if you have any. Okay, that was terrific. I am just going to start my video. That was all super informative. Thank you, everyone, for attending. So I, we do have a couple minutes for um, a few questions. So she, Cheyenne, this is a question for you. So you were discussing this settlement guide. So where can our members get access to things like that? Absolutely. Uh, we do have, uh, as I mentioned, the talenthub.com. And so it hosts all our resources there. It has, for example, the settlement guide, cost of living, quality of life. So these are things which you can download for free and share it with candidates if they want to know more about Winnipeg. Okay, so yeah. you did provide that information. And, and again, if people are wanting this webinar, I can provide those links again, for sure. Yeah. And Yelena, this question is for you. So you did mention when posting a job, that you have to be very, that you can't go back and edit it. So if there is a mistake on a job posting that indeed, oh, for sure, I want a skilled trade um, skill, you need to, and you've already posted it. So do they delete it or do they just um, then go and add another job posting? So there are different ways. For example, if the edit is really minor, if you, for example, want to enlarge the talent pool, you can uh, go suspend your job. So there is no option like to delete that immediately. You suspend the job and then um, you can edit the text in the job posting, like, you know, just to, to do some minor edits, but it will not allow you to edit the matching criteria. For example, it will not allow you to, to, to edit something that is critical to this role, like eliminate or delete. So like you will not even have have this uh, button but what you can do to to post it quickly again you can um, copy this job posting and then um, edit like once it's copied uh, you can edit it's like one second you um, edit whatever you need uh, you can go back to any criteria at any point you've created educational and professional background and then check everything again and post it back 
So again, the reason is so that uh, job that you suspended will be archived later by, by you. Um, it's just because if people already um, had a chance to apply, um, that's why you cannot change that or because people already received invitation to apply with the description of this job. So that's why uh, it's very important to put, like to read through uh, all this information before posting. Look at the numbers you, have, you get. Like again, if you have zero, uh, means something is wrong <laughs> with your job posting. Uh, something is not uh, adding up. So um, just paying more attention to that. And again, this is not to confuse job seekers uh, when they see um, this job posting and then you change it, but they already applied for, for the previous terms. For example, you would say you indicated that the person is enough to have bachelor degree and then you change that for a master, but the person already applied uh, knowing that it was on the bachelor and then he goes back and sees like, okay, there was master. So it will create confusion. So that's the reason why you cannot um, do um, Makes sense. Okay, and the last question is for Sophia. So you are mentioning work permits. So if our dealers come into a situation where they're needing to extend a work permit, is that even an option to them? Yeah, there's, there's a number of factors to consider to determine if a person is eligible for a work permit extension. And that's why the three month lead time is great because more options become available if there's more time. If there's less time, there still might be options available, but it'll be less options. But um, I have strategies and you know work with the different government departments to, to open those doors. But most, a lot of people who are on open work permits, a lot of those work permits cannot be extended, but it depends on the circumstances of how the work permit was obtained in the first place, which category the employee is in. But if they've been working for the employer for at least six months, we might have, or a year even, we have two other potential categories that can assist. So there's things like um, post-grad work permits for students, bridging open work permits for workers. And you know, there's, there's a number of different, there's like 70 different types of work permits. But um, so we would just need those factors and we can advise. But absolutely work permit extensions is an option. And the key element is that when you file a work permit extension, even if the work permit expires, the, if it's in the same job, same employer, all those factors are the same, then you can extend, uh, the, the employee can continue working until the decision is rendered. The right time, right now, processing times are at five months. So we would want, we tell our clients document or diarize that date to follow up with the employee and ensure what the decision was on the application. Because if it's refused, they need to be pulled off payroll. If it's approved, obviously you want that new work permit on your file. But again, a number of factors that go into whether or not eligibility is even an option for a work permit extension. That makes complete sense. Okay, well, those are all my questions and it's kind of at the end. Again, if anyone needs any of um, our three speakers contact information, by all means, give me an email, a call, um, info at mmda.mb.ca. Um, Sophia is well-versed in the automotive industry already helping some of our dealers. And uh, yes, Winnipeg, well, you have an amazing website that have all your resources. So if anyone has any questions, contact us and we will definitely help you out. Until then, thank you so much. It was super informative. I learned a lot and I'm sure our um, viewers did as well. So happy um, May the 5th be with you. <laughs> thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.